And now, please welcome to the stage DARPA computer scientist Paul Cohen. Please let me have five minutes for 600 words and 10 ideas. Here's the first idea Computers might compose 600 words to express 10 ideas, perhaps better than humans can. DARPA has a new program called Communicating with Computers that's about machines collaborating with humans, expressing their ideas, um, and acting as colleagues. Idea number two takes form in your head as I speak, and that's the idea. Language causes ideas to form. This makes language powerful, dangerous, and sometimes ruthlessly controlled. So idea three is a question. Free speech for humans is worth fighting for. Is free speech for computers worth fighting against? Are you attracted or appalled by the prospect of machines that have ideas and know how to express them? What if you were lonely? What if they were bigots? What if you each could change the other's mind? Idea four is that these questions have no easy answers because machines that can really communicate will be uncomfortably like humans. Alan Turing knew that communication, authentic communication, not the elevator chat that purports to pass the Turing test, but authentic communication was a strong test of intelligence. Did he realize that intelligent machines would also test us? Artificial intelligence gives us the opportunity to envision intelligence as it should be. Sadly, the pundits envision a cybernetic imperative in which machines seek only to enslave us and kill us, which probably says more about them than about artificial intelligence. Idea number six is that communication and competence bootstrap each other. How much could you do if your colleagues communicated you with you only by pointing and swiping and keywords and clicking and things like that? In the Communicating with Computers program, machines and humans will collaborate to figure out how deadly cancers work, and human authors will collaborate with machines to create works of jazz, video, and fiction. You, for example, might start a story, give the first line of the story. Mother cried at her window. And the machine would think, why is mother crying? What's beyond the window? And it would formulate a response, perhaps a banal response. Mother was sad. Or perhaps something offering real narrative possibilities. It was the third time since Sunday that she had found herself there. But in any case, formulating an idea in response to your own. Such creativity entails autonomy, and all autonomy has boundaries. Paint what you like on my ceiling, Michelangelo, so long as it comes from the Bible. Idea seven is that Autonomy is an asymmetric relationship between two parties in which I let you do what you want within bounds, but I accept responsibility for what you do. Who then accepts responsibility when our machines create mayhem and misery? At DARPA, we're formulating a mathematical theory of autonomy. That's idea number eight. With which to analyze when and how to deploy autonomous machines. Idea nine is actually centuries old and alluded to earlier uh, by Tom Dietrich. It'll be the uh, handmaiden, if you like, of the age of autonomous machines. It's insurance. Share the risks associated with autonomous machines and let the premiums, not the pundits, evaluate the benefits and costs of true autonomy. Now, the skeptic will reply that those costs are merely monetary. How do you assess the costs to our self-worth when we realize that machines can be quicker and cleverer and more creative than we? My answer to that has sustained me for 
pretty much my whole career. It's idea number tw 10. The more you work with intelligent machines, the more you appreciate the real thing. You are amazing. Be nice to yourself. Be nice to the least amongst us. Was that really 600 words? No, no, I'm six words short, enough for Hemingway to write a short story, or perhaps a machine to. But only the machines are counting. Thank you very much.